profit increased tenfold. Profit went from $4 million last year, this time to $43 million. And that came on the back of increased revenue and improvement in gross profit margin. However, on Friday, we see where the stock traded down from $1.83 to now trading at $1.61. And your guess is as good as mine. I know you get the stock right. We are talking about JFP. JFP releases its third quarter result. The result was an excellent result. However, the stock traded down last Friday. What we want to do is to look through JFP third quarter results in this video. While go on YouTube, I am O'Neill and you're watching Blue Color Finance. All right, so make we get in a JFP result. All right, first thing we want to talk about is the trading down of the stock. All right, so in anticipation of this result, we saw the stock price traded up. All right, so JP had a good look run up in the last week, last week of trading. I mean, like from Monday or the week before that, JP started ticking up in price. All right, I will see where the price and the stock peaked out at $1.83. About Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, there about. Now, when the result hit, the result is a good result. However, we're seeing where the stock traded back down last Friday by 12% for the day. And the question is on everybody's lips. What is happening to the JFP stock? All right, is it the curse of the market? Remember, all of the financial institutions turned them back on JFP. So maybe it is a market curse. That is having an impact on the stock price, even as a company um, report excellent results. All right. Now, looking at how the company has traded over the couple of months, coupling that with the fact that the, the dynamics of the market has been changing, um, there are a lot of retail investors in the market, and retail investors have different objectives that trade stocks. For different reasons. On October the 5th, 2022, JFP was trading at $1.50. All right, now the, the, the company peaked out at $1.83. Now, when you look at the return that a retail investor would have gotten from trading JP, from buying JP at the $1.50. To trading it at one dollar and eighty three cents, they would have made some twenty two percent on their money. That's in one month's time. All right, so these people would really take that return. All right, so it is the retail investors that are trading down the stock, taking those return, those twenty two percent return over a month's time. All right, and as a result, we see the stock trading down. So what we want to do is to break out the JP third quarter results. We want to look through those results to see what are the strong points of the company, what are the weak points of the company. And a lot of people have been talking about JFP having a cash flow problem. And this is something that has been in the market from IPO days. And blue color finance keep telling people JFP does not have a cash flow problem. The company might not be collecting its revenues on time. The company might have receivables piling up, but that does not amount to a cash flow problem. People have to be able to analyze be analytical be logical understand the figures learn to interpret the data all right it's just not if they are not able to call it the receiver but then there is a cash flow problem it's not like that all right and this has been around from um, the ipo people were saying that the company had a cash flow problem from the ipo 
the company has not taken out any debt. The company is still debt free in a sense, and we will talk about that. All right, so no debt, no taxes, and they're saying, look, this company has a cash flow problem. Not any cash flow problem, and I think it is the way in which management is forthcoming with the information. All right, so management is honest with the information, putting out the information as is, all right, without even um, using any PR technique. And that is the reason why people believe the company has a cash flow problem. But we're going to get into that, all right? So from top, revenue increase on 57% when you look at it year over year, all right? Year to date, revenue is up 50 seven percent to 329 million dollar now pre-ipo revenue was i saw them pulling in revenue of over 400 million dollar so we are looking to see jp go back to those level now for the third quarter revenue was up 24 percent all right to 115 million dollar all right, now Blue Color Finance told her that this revenue, this result would be a good result from last result when the company had a bad result last quarter. All right, but a lot of work was delayed in that quarter, which was brought over to this quarter that has had a good impact on the company's revenue. All right, so that's a good look for JFP. Now, JFP management was forthcoming with information. As I tell you, they told you that the revenue stream would be lumpy. All right. And a lot of people ran with this. They laugh at this. All right. But that was just the truth because the company um, does a lot of contracts. Sometimes you get contracts, sometimes you don't get contracts. And as a result, there will be some volatility in the revenue stream however management working on smoothing out those are the lumpy um, revenue streams all right so according to management they have stream they are streamlining the the company's operation um, to get out those rev, um, those lumpy revenue stream and to meet customers deadline all right, so that's of paramount importance for JFP meeting customers' deadline. All right, now last quarter we saw them not completing some some work and had those work pushed back, but it was not their fault as management claim. It was the customers come back redesigning the work, re um giving them more work to uh, to do redesigning the work changing the design of the work and as a result they had to push back those work and if you understand how jfp um operation is they are unable to record revenues until a portion until a portion of the work is done all right so even though they got and um, they got these contracts they cannot record any um any they cannot record any revenue until they do the work the work is finished so let's say they get a um a contract for 100 dollars, and they were able to do half of the work they only can record 50 dollars as revenue all right so that is how jfp's operation um is accounted for another thing as uh, let me talk about the cash flow all right so again how jfp operate has to do with the cash flow of the company so jfp might get a contract and they they get some money up front all right so a lot of times when they get contract they might get a portion of the money to carry out some fundamental work that must be done before the contract before they can actually start working on um, whatever work they must do and as a result of that, JFP gets money coming in before they actually start doing work. So these contract business, business that does contract has that front loaded money coming in at times. All right. So that's one other thing that you have to look at. Now, when you look at the cost of goods sold for JFP, this has always amazed me. 
All right, so when inflation was raveling through the in economy and a lot of companies' margin were being suppressed and companies were really having it, were really taking a hit from inflation, we saw JFP, cost of goods sold, heading down, all right, falling off. That was an issue. Um, that was magical to me. I just couldn't understand what was happening, why their cost of goods sold was not increasing as inflation was increasing and a lot of company was facing these higher costs. Now, one of my subscribers pointed out something very important and that is why I believe that me of the brightest subscribers, them, I swear, because just the ideas were then put forward, right? And that's why I'm always recommend that on a job with the ideas in the comment section come read those ideas and we get a lot of information from it so one of my subscriber and if you are watching you remember who i don't remember who the subscriber really is but if you are watching you know yourself go in the comment section jump go in the comment section jump a comment for tell me say yo all right so the subscriber was actually saying that look JFP is a manufacturing company, seen, and the cost of goods sold, a part of the cost of goods sold is the labor cost that deals directly with manufacturing those furniture. So the falling off that we're seeing in the cost of goods sold could be that JFP was keeping those labor costs steady and not increasing those labor costs. So JFP has control over that labor cost. And the thing about it, I may say, you know, this makes a lot of sense. Yeah, man, it makes a lot of sense. And now, we, we, now that I'm looking at the third quarter, what that subscriber um, said make even more sense because we're seeing where that is playing out now. All right? So, as I said, I want to get somebody over JFP to talk to upon the program here upon the channel because we have a lot of questions to ask about JFP. All right, so I'm going to try to get in touch with Ryan Strand, all right, from GK. So everybody know Ryan, him are the one who always, um, I think of them bring JP, JFP to market scene. So I'm going to try to get in touch with him. I go up on him YouTube channel, I send him a message, I go up on him Twitter, and not take a message on Twitter. So anybody know Ryan, send Ryan the, the video. I uh, make him know the blue color finance with a love and do an interview with him so we can just flesh out some of the questions that we have about JFP. Alright, so in other um the third quarter now, we see where the cost of goods for JFP has increased over some 26%. This is strange to me. JFP has a reputation of controlling the cost of goods sold. In the inflation period, so no inflation is a bit trick. We see where inflation is coming down in Jamaica, all right. Worldwide inflation is coming down, and look here, it is no JFP cost of goods sold is increasing 26% for the third quarter. However, when you look at the year to date, it is still down by 1%. So, what does that mean? Even though the cost of goods increased by that amount in the third quarter, it was not enough to undo the reduction in the cost of goods sold leading up to the third quarter. That's what I'm telling you. The company had the cost of goods sold under check. All right, so that was one of the good points that we know about JFP's operation. Now, for the nine months, all right, now. Gross profit was up 129%. And when you look at gross profit margin, that was also up. Moving from 44% to 65%. Now, you have to be careful when management are giving you the result, you know, because we are talking about the third quarter. See, so we say gross profit, cost of goods sold was up for the third quarter. But instead of them giving the, the profit for the third quarter and the margins for the third quarter, no, they never do that. They give with the profit for the nine months and the gross profit margins for the nine months. Remember, you know, for the nine months, it has got have the impact of Q1 and Q2. And Q1, Q2, Q1 was very good. Excellent result, Q1. 
what we did was to go into the report and dig out the information for ourselves. All right. So Q3 gross profit was up 24%. All right. So gross profit was doing good. However, here is the little problem. Gross profit margin fell for Q3. All right. So gross profit margin fell not by much, just by 1% from 59% to 58%. All right. So that is saying a lot to us. Gross profit margin fall off, not by much. But pre the analysis now, it takes a 26% increase in cost of goods sold to move gross profit margin by 1%. Again, it takes a 26% increase in cost of goods sold to reduce gross profit margin for JFP by 1%. Tells me a lot. And we are not seeing where the gross profit, the cost of goods sold will continue to increase by that amount. All right. So it's a good look for JFP. The gross profit margin is high and stable. And it means something in terms of the company's competitiveness, in terms of the company's ability to price its product or, or to... In terms of the company's ability to get high price for its products. Alright, so that's a good look for JFP. Now when you look at the investment. Alright, so investment income fell off from $20 billion to a little over some $100,000. Um, so that wasn't a good look. Alright, some people might look at this as bad. But people need to realize that. These investments are not JFP core operation. This is just something on the side. It's not the main course. It's just whatever they call it. It's just the appetizer. So if you get it, you take it. If you not get it, <laughs> what does it matter? All right. So <clears throat> this is something we're going to have to talk about. You know? We're going to talk about this in the balance sheet, the investments of JFP has in the stock market all right so for the last quarter jfp had over 88 million dollar in investment now the company claims that them sell off some of them investment they fund the operation of the company that's a working capital and that is the reason why people are set jfp are run out of cash it has a cash flow problem and it's a way management coin it all right just the way management that put it forward all right but jfp Far from having a cash flow problem. But we are going to get into that. So as I said, the investment went from $88 million in the last quarter that we saw. That was in June. And now the investment is down to $50 million. JFP sold off some of those investments to fund its operations. All right, It's working capital. Soon talk about that in a more detail. We're going to talk about the administrative expense. That increased from 48 percent all right administrative expense increased 48 percent and this was increased staff costs so increased staff costs overtime jumping labor challenge and the incentive program these are the reasons why the company said the administrative expense increased by this amount all right so staff costs increase the staff are doing more overtime, all right? The company are expand. The company are get larger, so it requires more working hours from its people. Now, this is a real problem that we're having in Jamaica, not just JFP. This problem is, is, is facing, all right? But this is a real problem. It is happening to the highway, the building of the highway. People are saying they can't get laborer, all right? So they can't get laborer, all right? So... Here, JFP is saying it's the same thing, challenge in getting labor. And as a result, people have to work overtime. And as a result, we are seeing less productivity. All right, so you're tired, you're stressed, and you still have to depend on the work and the extra hours. And then we have to pay you two times and three times. All right, so this is an issue with the Jamaican economy. People are more John, John to scamming. People like to ease the money. And as a result, these technical jobs, these um practical jobs are not having sufficient supply of labor 
that is impacting JFB result. All right, so here this is confronting um, we're back to the cost of goods sold where cost of goods sold is increasing and we believe that it is the labor costs that has increased, the overtime that has increased and that's the reason why we see cost of goods increasing even though inflation has checked. All right, so as I said, JFP, when inflation was increasing rapidly, JFP cost of goods sold was decreasing. Now we see where JFP cost of goods sold is increasing. And we believe that it is a labor cost as a company expands and start doing more business and it needs more labor and it's unable to employ those more labor because of the minimum labor, um, the labor market. All right, the um the market from which it can pull labor is minimal all right and people not interested in these types of work anymore jfp labor have to have um, have to be um doing overtime and as a result this is causing the cost of goods to increase selling and distribution costs JFP takes this very serious, all right? So they are out marketing, they are out trying to sell their product, trying to get the brand more out into the global space, all right? So you know JFP is doing a lot of trade shows, all right? They are on the road looking work. So we are selling and distribution costs is up over 240%, all right? So that a good look that went from 5 million dollar to 50 million dollar and the marketing campaign went up there they're spending over six million dollar on marketing campaign all right traveling and looking work all right so that's a good look for jfp the main thing that the company wants to do is to reduce those lumpy um revenue remember that 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 um that statement by metro siaga the revenues are a bit lumpy, all right? So the boy has something steady to just smooth off the revenue going forward. All right, so as a result, the profit is up over tenfold, over 10 times, all right? So it's a 10 bang of them I deal with in this uh, result, a $43 million as against $4 million over the last quarter. Make we go on to the balance sheet. All right, so when we look at the balance sheet, what jumped out at me, what is very important to me, is the investment. I love the JP balance sheet because we just go right to the investment because this is what I've been saying to a lot of companies. When we look at the lab, all right, so we look at lab, lab has a lot of money sitting on the balance sheet in cash. Crazy money upon lab balance sheet in the cash. I'm always a set. Why them need a capital allocator? Somebody for just use the money investing in some stocks. Don't make the money sit down not doing anything. See? But then, come to think about it. This said money that JP, JFP, I keep saying JP, you know. JFP is using to invest in stock. It is the money. It is the same money that is a problem. That is why people are looking at JFP as having a problem, having a cash flow problem. Because the company used the money instead of allowing the money to sit on the balance sheet as cash. The company used the money to invest in stocks, which is what they have been doing from the IPO days. What people don't understand because they are looking at these investments as if it is JP's core operation. It is not JP's core operation. If I mean JFP core operation keeps saying JP. But if JFP did not use these um cash and invest, then would have the cash on the balance sheet just sit on. And then everybody would have said them not have a cash problem because them, they, they are awash with cash. But that don't make no sense. That is inefficiency. That is wasting money. So the company simply move the cash out of these short-term investments and put them in a longer-term investment where them can make more money. All right? And now people are saying them have a cash flow problem because they have to sell them back those investments and take out a part for the fund. The... The working capital. So, JFP management, maybe we don't need to work on this. 
because you don't, you don't hear how the investors them think. This that you're doing is the right thing to do. All right, but investors, retail investors, when they really understand finance. That has the ability to sell down the stock, just like how we see them sell down the stock just the other day on the back of this report. I saw them think. So I don't know if you have to start get with the thinking. I don't know. I don't know. I swear. So as as more people invest in the stock market, this is getting more interesting. I swear. Every day we read these things, it's getting really, really interesting. So. The investment was up 31%, all right? And however, for the third quarter, JFP would have to sold off those investments to fund its working capital. So we we'll see where the investment fell off and the investment is now at $50 million, all right? And that is coming from $88 million in about June. All right, so them still have some of the investments, still have a lot of investments, still have over fifty million dollar in the Jamaica Stock Exchange in companies listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. So fifty million dollar, the company has working capital of one hundred and five million dollar. So one hundred and five million dollar is what them really want for working at the business. I'm a team. Them have too much money tied up in a working capital. So I still believe them can move more money, go up an investment. Alright, and go and make some more money. That's all. But we are gonna talk about that as we reach down that's all. Alright. So that's the investment. The company have a lot of money in investment still. $50 million. Them can sell off that anytime they want. So no cash flow problem that they hear, sir. Alright, so that's a one. Two, receivables increase 60%. Receivable move from $95 million to $152 million. And here's where people are saying there's a cash flow problem. Alright, you know blue color finance keep the things straight. When when problem there, the blue color finance I got a problem there. Alright? This is an issue. Would I love to see them I collect the money faster? Alright? And the, the the receivable, as I say, them cannot book revenue nor receivable before them do the work so when i say receivable on jfp's balance sheet it means the work is already done see so them bugged that already so i just see the money come in so maybe them need to call it that faster we don't like see that we don't like see people that use our money all right because the longer you take to call it the money it means the people out there use money that is ours we don't like that. We like the reverse of that. We like use people money. All right. So get sort that out. On a need for sort that out. All right. We don't know what we're not gonna do for sort that out, but sort that out. Inventory went up three hundred percent, over three hundred percent to one hundred and seventeen million dollar. I mean, yeah, million dollars. So what the company really has said is that shortages it out. You know, so things short nowadays. All right. The supply chain disruption you know that happen all right so the supply chain disruption there a lot of shortages so the company has said all right make we stock up on inventory all right so the money that is being drawn down is the use to stock up on inventory so we can get more contracts so when we get the contract it's not like we'll say you know we're not have the material for doing it now all right so the company use that investment money to Stock up an inv um, in inventory so he can take advantage of whatever contract is coming to it. Alright, so I could tell the little story right here. So, and here's where one little problem in a JFP operation. Alright, and they need to solve it. Now, JFP have enough cash, excess cash. So instead of having those excess cash sitting on the balance sheet, the company said, Alright, here's what we are gonna do. We are gonna move out the excess cash and care them go invest them. All right. Now the company invest those in local stock market in the local stock market. So instead of having the cash sitting not doing nothing, we invest them. No other right time to invest them. The stock market is down. There's a lot of bargain on the stock market. All right. So that's a good move. I rate that. I love that. That I love. See, I'm recommend that for a lot of companies on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. All right. However, the company is not collecting its money fast enough. All right. Company not collect the money fast enough. 
in, um, receivable uh, increase. And we see where shortages out there in terms of raw material. And we see where the supply chain ships now ply the, 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 the harbor, the, the routes as much as they used to. So the company want money now for carrying some a lot of things, you know, at once. All right. So what the company would have to do now is to go back for the investment what we just make. Sell off some of them investment there to buy the inventory. Now, if the company was collecting the receivables, they could have buy him inventory and we still have the investment them in the Jamaica Stock Exchange. I wait until we get some capital gain. So because the company is unable to collect these results, I mean these receivables, it prevents us from investing our money and using the money efficiently. So now we have to come so boom, we sell off the investment, we buy the inventory. And now the inventory are gonna sit and wait before being used. So it's almost like we got back a cash again. Worse than cash because the inventory now made no money upon it. So here we have a lot of money tied up in inventory. Over 117 million dollar worth of inventory. And we now go use so much of them this fast so you see where the problem is too much money tied up in inventory and it is all due to the fact that you're unable to collect the receivable and that even worse the receivable mean other people are use our money so other people are use our money we have to use our money and tie up in our inventory it's not a good look so we need to fix that all right and it's not hard to fix. That's very easy to fix. So simply I'll collect the money where, where we do the work. All right. So payable. Um, <clears throat> sorry. All right. So we see we're a payable increase, and that's due to the overseas supplies were coming in. All right. So we like to see payable increase as long as we keep those at manageable levels, and we're not lose the supplier. All right, that is okay with me. One other thing that we think we need to talk about too is you see where the property plant and equipment money move from property plant and equipment that reduce and lease increase. So it's almost like we have the building, I will start lease the building. I, them said them mentioned that in the IPO, but trust me, me forget it. Me don't know what it is. So. But I want somebody, again, Ryan, we are call up on you. Give Blue Color Finance a link and make we talk about JFP result. All right? Um, so the lease, and this lease is affecting us in terms of our paying leases. All right? So we have a pay lease out on an annual basis. It's almost like an interest rate. And it's a finance lease. We realize that them have as against an operational lease. I mean, the accounting has not has changed in how those leases are recorded so all leases are now recorded the same normally there would be a difference between how the finance lease is recorded and how the um the operating lease is recorded in terms of the balance sheet but no all leases are recorded the same on the balance sheet it has a different implication for the profit and loss statement all right so the money moving the property moving from jfp owning the property to now jfp leasing the property we need some clarity on that one thing when we like about jfp there is no tax and there is no debt so that it's debt free tax free all right so that's a good look however there is a devil in the details and blue color finance like looking at the details all right now due to directors money due to director is a trick all right so we see where money is due to director we have a problem with it because we see where you have to pay the director's interest that's an issue so even though we are saying you don't have the debt you really have debt it's just that you don't call it debt all right so here it is now you're paying you have 60 million dollar on the balance sheet that is due to directors and you're paying eleven million dollar in interest to those money, and when we check that, that's like eighteen percent that you're paying out. All right, 
Blue Collar Finance, I got to talk the things them as Blue Collar Finance see it. However, what we like about the fact is that you reduce that to now $11 million. So that went from $60 million to now $11 million. So you yeah, clear that up. We want to see that eliminate half of the balance sheet. The $11 million there, take out some money out of the investment where you have the $50 million where we have an investment and pay off the directors them clean. We don't want to send out money owed to the directors because the interest rate that the directors are charging for the loan is too expensive. We cannot afford that. All right, so the 18% there, we can't afford it. Pay them $11 million and make we get rid of them. Half of the balance sheet. So we want to clean up the balance sheet. So after that, we're supposed to see a company that has no debt and that has no taxes. All right, so with that type of company, we are looking to see that company grow into becoming a monster. All right, so as you know, a blue color finance, and you don't know how the thing go over here. Yeah? You don't know all the stuff. Like the video, share the video, drop a comment, and make a chat about it, and keep on. I tell you, the Telegram group hot. All right, good conversation, good information, and it's a place where you can come express your opinion. As I say, all opinions can content all right and ryan strand you are going if you watch this give blue color link seeing the link upon your 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 um my link you on your youtube channel I drop a comment and we are say we want to talk about jfp results and the reason why jfp stock a fall off what management is doing to shore up JFP's profit. Alright, chat to you in the next one.